welcome back to our cottage garden. We're in the vegetable garden today and you can see there's been a lot of growth. Things are looking really, really big and you're probably not surprised that it's time to harvest things as well. So we're gonna be picking our garlic today, which I've been anticipating through winter and spring and watching it and keeping an eye on it. So I can't wait to do that. And then I've got some new things to go in that bed to replace the garlic and berries are ready finally. So we've got some Logan berries that we're gonna be picking and a couple of jobs to do around the garden as well. But honestly, I haven't done too much out here the past couple of weeks because it's been so hot um, so we've been waiting for it to cool down a little bit and come out here and harvest some things but I am desperate to get cracking so let's go. So it's time for the garlic to come up. A couple of weeks ago we harvested the scapes from the top, that's the um, flower buds, and now the leaves have started dying back and going yellow, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Um, I've only done elephant garlic this year, and partly because I didn't have time to get to the shops and order any other types, but also because I find it really rewarding growing elephant garlic, and it's always such a big size, and even in the worst case scenario, if the bulbs don't split, you still have one massive clove of garlic that you can use. Um, so the taste of it's a little bit milder, um, so you would use more, but I just find it way more interesting to grow. And I've even got a few that I've left around the garden to flower this year to see what that looks like. And those are just starting to flower and they're amazing, like really big, tall alliums. Um, so definitely worth growing these. Um, I'm going to try and get them out with a fork and see how we go. They look a little bit on the small side, so I don't really know what to expect. There are also sun chokes in this bed, um, which once I've got the garlic out, that's what I'm gonna be dedicating the space to. So there's our first one. Um, I planted these back in November or October last year. Um, it actually looks like this one hasn't split, so it's one whole clove. I'll still use it and I don't mind that at all, but um, I think it's the frosts that make the cloves split and we had plenty of frosts over the winter, so not quite sure why that's happened, but it will still taste fine and it's a decent size. So there you go, I'm pretty happy with that harvest. No problems with pests or diseases or anything, just a mix of different sizes and a few bulbs that didn't split and a few that did. Um, I don't mind, we'll eat them all and that will all go to good use in the kitchen. I'll hang them up in my shed upside down. Um, I usually do this across the um, roof bars with a bit of string. Um, and these can dry out over the next couple of weeks and the foliage will continue to crisp up and then they'll be ready for platting and storing. I will keep some of these for planting next year as well. Um, I'll probably pick out the bigger bulbs that have split and then um, maybe save four of those so that I can plant the same again somewhere next year. Um, but we are going to dedicate this bed to sunchokes now. And if you know anything about sunchokes, they do take over. Um, so I bought a couple of plants last year, which is what you can see in here at the moment. And then we were kindly given some by a friend. So I'm going to add the rest of those in. And uh, before we know it, this bed will be completely covered in sunchokes and we can start harvesting and eating those too. Um, I haven't actually tried any yet, so I hope we like them because <laughs> we're going to dedicate a um, permanent space to them. But they have lovely sunflower type flowers as well, so looking forward to seeing those late summer, early autumn. So I've got 11 pots of sun chokes and um, I have been guilty of just abandoning these in a pot of water. So I think although some of them have rotten, um, they are such a persistent plant that I can probably just pull bits off and use the bits that have survived. So I'm going to try and fill some of the empty space. And I don't think this is something that's going to look good this year, but hopefully next year we'll start to get good flowers on these and good coverage. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to having this bed be kind of permanent and um, looking lovely as well. So it doesn't look like much yet, but I've got the additional tubers in the ground now and I've split up the existing plants to make a few more for free. Next, we've got loads of Logan berries to pick and this is our first year harvesting these. We put them in the ground last year and um, I basically wanted to extend the season um, beyond just growing raspberries and grow something different. So these are a cross between a blackberry and a raspberry. There's so many of these ready now. So I'm just going to pick everything that I can see. My one regret with growing these is that I wish I bought a thornless variety um, because I put these in, they established over the last kind of eight months and then I saw in the garden centre that you can get exactly the same thing without spikes. So, um, But maybe the spikes are helpful for stopping the birds eating the fruit, who knows. 
So there you go, that's our Loganberry harvest. Um, there's still so much more to come out of those plants as well. Um, I have planted them a little bit too close together in hindsight. Um, I put four of them in. I think one of them might have died, but um, I've got three of them in about a metre and a half worth of space. So I might have to take the middle one out and move it. Um, but that's good news because it means we can kind of grow berries all along the edge there. Got loads of room. but really in keeping with the idea of this bit of the garden as being an area where we don't need to do too much maintenance and things will just kind of create food each year and we'll top up the compost and give them a bit of a feed but it is otherwise quite low maintenance and think about how expensive that would be in the supermarket or in the greengrocers. Um, absolutely love growing berries and such an easy thing to grow um, and they are so much more tasty when you grow them yourself. So it's time to tidy up the great vine here and this was here when we moved in and it's actually not one that we really eat um, because the grapes are seeded and they're kind of bitter. I'm not sure if it would have been used for making wine or something at some point but um, I still take care of it and it's quite a nice plant to have. And we do feed the grapes to the ducks. The ducks absolutely love them, so they don't go to waste. So the idea with um, cutting this back at the moment is that you reduce the number of um, fruits on the plant and then these will be sweeter because it won't be trying to produce as many. Um, so they should taste nicer for this. Um, I'm not sure I've ever liked the taste of the grapes from this plant, but the ducks do. And if you don't control it, it's a plant that will just get out of hand and take over. Um, these whippy bits of growth that I'm taking off are really good for making wreaths. If you ever want to make a homemade wreath, um, if you remove the leaves and then twist them into a hoop and let them dry, they'll go a nice woody kind of stiff base for making a wreath. So if that's something you're interested in, I recommend growing grapes. Um, but I'm just cutting these back to two or three kind of leaves distance from the main plant so I'll count one two three and then cut there but it doesn't have to be precise I'm not very um, fussy over this plant because it's not one we eat from I just trim them back to try and tidy it up a bit So there you go, the grape plants had its hair cut and they have a huge pile of stuff to go on the compost now. I'm gonna try and carry this up to the top of the garden. Um, the last thing to do up here is deadhead the sweet peas and then we're pretty much on top of our jobs up here. So I've got a few sweet pea plants that I've been climbing up here and I'm just gonna deadhead these so that we keep getting more flowers on them. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of sweet peas and I think I probably will phase out growing them in the garden. It seems a bit wasteful just growing them for the flowers when there are so many types of pea plants that have pretty flowers on and you can eat the seed pods as peas. So this may well be my last time growing sweet peas, um, but I'm still gonna make the most of it while they're here and give them a deadhead every now and again. They might need a bit of water today as well as we get into the evening. It's too hot to water now. So there we go, sweet peas are deadheaded and another load of stuff going up to the compost bin. So while we're up here, I thought I'd quickly show you the progress on the cut flower patch because I was worried that these um, plants weren't going to catch up but they've put on a lot of growth already so I'm really pleased with how this is going and I think the compost that we added to the top must be doing well or the duck mess that we used in the middle of the bed but I am really excited um, and I can see a couple of flowers on the Nicotiana plants already just starting to open but I'm most excited about these asters which are a really big frilly kind of pom-pom type flower um, no sign of any flowers on those yet but I'm just pleased with how they're coming along so hopefully it won't be long so there you go, hope you enjoyed having a little harvest from our vegetable garden today. Um, we'll be back soon with a flower tour for our summer flowers and polytunnel as well. I've got loads of tomatoes to show you soon, so that's really exciting. Um, make sure you give us a subscribe if you'd like to see how our cottage garden develops over the months and years, and we'll see you next time.